Agriculture on the move. My name is Philip Sidney, your host. Today we are discussing a very important topic, and that is pesticides, the use of pesticides. So you will hear about the delisting, the banning of pesticides, uh, the hazardous pesticides, and everything pesticides today. And with me, there are three individuals. With me to my right is Mr. Kitas Alexander, who is the pesticide registrar. And next to him is a, a rose between two thorns. We have collector Charles Leo, who is a senior environmental officer. And of course, next to her is Mr. Christopher Lubin, who is the owner of FDL Pest Control Solutions. Welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, man. Mr. Kitas, I know you are not new to this. Uh, that's why you said you're not coming back here again. <laughs> um, pesticides. Before um, I get anywhere with this thing, tell us the role of the pesticide board. The pesticide board is the regulator for toxic and toxic pesticides and toxic chemicals in Saint Lucia. Right. We issue import permits. We do pesticide registration and we do monitoring of pesticides in the agribusiness places. So, so people like FDL, when they want to register a new chemical, they come through? Yes, the they have to board. come with the, the, an approved label, an application, and the certificate of analysis, plus the MSDS sheet for the pesticides. It is reviewed and is taken to the board for registration. Okay. So that's how registration is out. Okay. okay, great. Okay, recently I heard there were a number of pesticides hanging around and um, they were still in use. Um, I know in some other countries they were banned, but I heard recently that you all delisted about 310 pesticides. Tell us about this. Um, in 2019, the approved pesticide list for St. Lucia was submitted to the FDA for review. The findings of that review indicated that we have more pesticides registered than the entire European Union. We have more pesticides registered than Guyana. St. Lucia? Yes, we have more pesticides registered than Jamaica. On our approved list of pesticides, we have 15 highly hazardous pesticides and we have four pesticides that need to be carcinogenic. So it's very important at, uh, for, for the board to um, take a decision in terms of the listing and banning of those pesticides. Mm -hmm. Now, for us now, we're going to ban four pesticides. All pesticides containing malafion will be banned. All pesticides containing diazena all pesticides containing cabril and all pesticides containing <coughs> chlorpyrifos and chlorpyrifos methyl will ban these pesticides. In terms of the delisting of pesticides, we have 310 pesticides to list of the approved pesticides. These include pesticides that are no longer being manufactured, pesticides whereby the formulations have changed, and pesticides that persons have not imported for the past 10 years. We're going to release those pesticides. And if in case somebody wants an import permit for those 310 pesticides, we go going to ask them for information, latest information on those pesticides. And then we're going to re-register those pesticides. So they can be re-registered? Yes. Once you, you, you come with the latest information, because we have pesticides that we registered in the early 1980s. So in 2023, a lot has happened in terms of the chemistry of these pesticides. It was very important for the board to review the approved pesticide list and take this very important decision 
to make sure that um, the products that pistons are using now, the new for farmers and for structural pest control, those pesticides are safe for human health, the environment, and plant health. I already mentioned marathon, and I'm coming to Mrs. Leo, because at one time, I think in your before being your you were <coughs> marathon. Are you still using that? Yes, so we still, we still use malathion as one of the pesticides that, you know, for adult and killing the adult mosquitoes. Um, because we recognize, like all other pesticides, that there are negative effects of using the pesticide. And um, of course, at Ministry of Health, um, the health and safety of our St. Lucian public is our number one concern. Hence, the reason we're looking at uh, alternative pesticides that we can use to ensure that it is effective at getting rid of the mosquitoes at the adult stage and it poses as little harm to the human population. So this is definitely something that we are currently working on. The sales of malathion is on the, is on the listing. Is banned or is on the listing? We will ban malathion. We will ban it. So how does that affect the use? You, as your, as your department, using okay. that chemical? So, like I said, we're going to be looking at alternatives, but. Uh, we have seen, uh, which is the sad thing, we have seen resistance to some of the other alternatives that are actually out there on the market. So we've had uh, um, resistance testing done with the Caribbean Public Health Agency, and they saw that resistance, which is one of the reasons that we went back into using malafion. Right? Yes. So we are looking at, because uh, it's been a couple of years since we've used some of these other pesticides, we're looking at if we still have resistance to it because if we continue using just malafion we may develop some resistance to it so what does that where does that leave us but malafion has been used for a long long time yes um, but I think uh, it's been a couple of years for a good couple of years we did not use it at the ministry uh, we were using um, other pyrophoids uh, other chemicals mm -hmm. um, it was only in 2000 and I think 15 that we started using malafion again. And we're trying our best to promote um, not just the alternative pesticides, but we're looking at improving um, the the education, the sensitization that we do with our pub, our general public. Because uh, if we focus on just the use of chemicals and we don't uh, address the situation at the root, the problem is just going to persist. So in many, many instances, people call us and they ask us to come to do the fogging. But when we go and we do the fogging, it only kills the mosquitoes at the adult stage. It won't get rid of that mosquito that you have in your drum and your, your containers, your tires and so forth. So we're really trying to encourage persons before even we even get to the point where we, use, we need to use malafion or we need to go in to spray any chemical in any neighborhood that they're doing what it is that you're supposed to do at their home. So just 10 minutes, walk around your home, ensure that you have no mosquito breeding sites, any active or potential mosquito breeding sites. Check your your containers, your roof guttering, um, get rid of all appliances like your washing machines and your, your um, your fridges and so tires forth. That can, and yes, tires that can actually collect water and breed mosquitoes. So we're really trying to take home that message before we can before we get to the point of having to use chemicals and so pesticides in our environment. The, the last, the last resort. It is the last resort. Mm -hmm. So we really want to push that that Chris, proactiveness. Coming to you, um, you've been involved in that for many years now. I've been involved in it for almost 20 years. 20 years. But pesticides as a whole, over 35 years. Oh, 35 years. Uh, hearing the delisting, how does that affect you? The delisting of Marathon would not affect any area-wide mosquito management program, in my view, mm -hmm. simply because of what um, Charlotte has said. The, it's just one part of an area-wide mosquito management program. Mm -hmm. So if one were to look at the mosquito management around their homes, it's about understanding the behavior of the mosquito. And we go back to simple biology. It's life cycle, complete mm -hmm. metamorphosis. Mm -hmm. So if we get rid of the immature stages, mm -hmm. we only have to, we would have less adults to worry about. Mm -hmm. And um, fogging would only be something that would happen maybe after a week or something after an event where you know you would not have been able to get rid of all mosquitoes.
mosquito breeding sites mm -hmm. or water sources. That's one. You have monomolecular films, products you could put on the surface of water that's not being used to prevent the mosquitoes mm -hmm. from surviving mm -hmm. if they were to lay their eggs in there. Mm -hmm. Or you have bacteria that can be used, um, put into the water, the larvae eat it and it kills them. Mm -hmm. You also have growth regulators that can be used in water sources to actually prevent the mosquito from becoming the uh, larva, sorry, from becoming a mosquito. So there are several options out there, but I, I, I agree with what Charlotte has said. The most important thing is to understand those breeding sources and try to reduce them as much as possible. Other than mosquito control, your company do other? Yes, we, we do a wide range of pests, and um, we stress integrated pest management. Um, the average person calls and says, I have a rat, I have cockroaches, and you know, come and spray it. And we educate people that it's not about spraying. It's spraying just like the use of malathion in the area mm -hmm. hospital management is only one aspect of integrated pest management. So you need to know why you have a problem. Um, if you look at bed bugs, for example, which is something that's around, people talk a lot about it, a bed bug cannot walk into your house. It's a hitchhiker, you carry it into your house. So if you go out, you have to watch where you sit. If you come back home, your clothes where you put it, you need to pay attention to those things. And then the breeding will take place in your home if you don't take mm -hmm. care. But we do a wide range of pests, and we stress to every, every person, you must first inspect and understand what caused the pest problem. So we refer to what's called conducive conditions, food, shelter, water, temperature to a lesser extent. These are what encourage pests to be in certain environments. So if I can reduce one of these conducive conditions, like in the case of mosquitoes, if I remove the water source, I reduce the incidence of the pest being in my environment. You, do you use inorganic um, chemicals? We use inorganic chemicals, but we, 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 we limit the use and we use them in a targeted way. So, for example, you could do a crack and crevice treatment, for example, where you put the pesticide directly where the pest is. Mm -hmm. So, let's say a German cockroach or a bell bug, they are phigmotatic. They like to stay in tight spaces. So, you can put the pesticide in there. We use a lot of baiting systems. Even in the case of mosquitoes, we use a mosquito trap. Mm -hmm. But we use a baiting system for pests like termites, where they, because of the way they feed and communicate, they treat transfer information mouth to mouth. And um, you can have them transfer the pesticide to where you Absolutely. don't know where they are. Mm -hmm. So that's the modern way of looking at pest management. I'm not just spraying large volumes of pesticide. Because if I see a termite mound, for example, and I spray it, it doesn't mean I killed off the queen, which might be a win. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I'd rather get the pesticide transferred to her. So if you look at pesticides from an agricultural point of view, back in the bad days, you would apply permissive to the soil. Mm -hmm. And these pesticides would adsorb, stick to the soil, and the pest would get impacted. Mm -hmm. So if I were to do that in the case of, let's say, termites, I am basically limiting my application to them and hope that these termites carry the pesticide all the way back. But I have rain and I have other factors that can impact it. Mm -hmm. So if I use bait, I know for sure I can always come and monitor and look at what's happening and keep on feeding them and eventually take out that population. So right now, your, 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 your highest percentage of chemicals are or, organic chem. We, not all of them. We still have inorganic products, mm -hmm. and we have certain minerals like the borates that we use, mm -hmm. but um, we use the synthetic products strategically, okay. not wide scale like if you, if you look at agriculture and you have a crop, you spray the entire crop. Mm -hmm. But if I have a pest problem, because we have to understand the biology, we know where they would be. So we target them in that That's space. Perfect. So if you look at the American cockroach, for example, people say they fly into my home. You have two of them that look almost the same. There's the Australian cockroach, which is a vegetarian, mm -hmm. and the American cockroach, which is not. But you'll get it more like in your septic tank area, or wet places, right? Mm -hmm. On your kitchen sink where, you know, you might have a leak. So if you say to us, you have that problem, we would come to inspect to figure out exactly where it is and treat accordingly. Okay. Figures, um, the delisting chemicals and those you ban, okay? I remember some years ago, um, there were lots of chemicals here. I'm sure they're part of the delisting. Um, FA was involved in trying to get them out. One of the problems is to get chemicals out of your island. Okay. So after the delisting, what happens? Um, we are not going to issue people permits for these pesticides. Okay. Now, presently, you have persons in possession of some of these pesticides. So what is going to happen? We're going to phase it out. Since we're not going to issue new import permits, it means whenever that what is available on island presently is exhausted, it means 
that we'll be able to manage the stock. Yes, we had a project with the FAO where we, we collected obsolete stocks from, 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 from a number of countries in, in, in the Caribbean. But what we have to understand is that um, these things do not, it, it's not sustainable. It only happens once in a while. So we have not had this program for about five years. And um, presently, we have a lot of pesticides that are accumulating in a container we have at Union. Mm -hmm. Because when you bring in, as I said, the board is responsible for the regulation of pesticides. So, to, to, for example, if you bring in unregistered pesticides, those pesticides are confiscated and stored at a, in a container at Union. Mm -hmm. So definitely, we need to have a system in place, not only a system for regular delisting of pesticides, but also disposal is very important for us as well. So there's no um, mechanism in place no, for Presently, the, the, the Solid Waste Management Authority is not responsible for pesticide disposal. Okay. That's a loophole in the legislation. We'll talk about that in a while before our break. You're watching Agriculture and Move. Stay tuned. We'll be back very soon. The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security and Rural Development is placing heavy emphasis on the concept of food security. It's our prosperity, our future. The Farmer Incentives Program of the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security and Rural Development is aimed at reducing the cost of production and promoting food security and accessibility. All farmers, fishers, and agro-processors who've registered and own a farmer's registration card qualify. These incentives include the percentage reduction of excise tax and import duties for agricultural and fisheries production inputs, which are imported. These include approved agricultural products for an approved agricultural project, for example, vehicles, fishing vessels, animals, animal feed, planting materials, and other farm inputs. Farmers can apply by completing the application form and submitting with all relevant documents attached. For further information, contact the Deputy Director of Agricultural Services at 468-4125. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture on the Moon. Of course, if you're tuning in lately, we are talking about pesticide, use of pesticides, the delisting of pesticides. And of course, I have three persons in here who are well apt enough to discuss this activity here. Um, you mentioned FAO and the, the list of chemicals that are not in use, but they are stored at Union. Okay, you mentioned also that solid waste is not responsible for the disposal of this. So, uh, how are you going to get those chemicals out of there? Well, normally you have projects um, collecting, the, when you have special projects in the region, they, they collect those pesticides. But we are hoping that very soon some project will come up and they will get <laughs> the skills of those pesticides. <laughs> well, you hope is a motor motor. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can only hope because, as I said, originally, and locally, we do not have the facilities to deal with those pesticides. If you want to destroy those pesticides, you have to um, export them to France and those bigger countries. That is where we have the facilities to incinerate and so on. So, hold on. So, if, if nothing comes around, no project comes around, those chemicals are going to be in a continent union? Yes, until, we, we, until such project. So, in terms of the decay of the, 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 um, the, the, the holding material and stuff like this, well, what happens? The pesticides are stored in special containers. These pesticides we have at Union, they are stored in special containers. So, it will take some time before that happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Because um, I know people are complaining about, about that, the chemicals at Union. People the, uh, uh, around the area. We had a, the, yes, the we had a particular area. pesticide that, that, that was very volatile that was stored in the container. But mm. so far we have dealt with the issue and then nothing is happening. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you're still waiting for the project to come around? Yeah, to be <laughs> 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 Mrs. Leon, um, apart from the control of the mosquito, are there any of the pests that you're responsible to, household pests that you're responsible for control? Okay, we also do um, control of uh, rodents as well. Mm. So um, we have a rodent uh, control aspect of our program. So the sad thing is that 
due to limited human resources, we aren't able to do this type of road and control in all communities, but we focus pretty much on the towns and the cities on the island. So in Castries, we would normally have officers in the city of Castries doing road and control. They would be doing the assessments, looking at areas where you see higher populations of rats and mice. Um, they would be doing that, the same thing in view for Sufre. Um, we would also be responding to the complaints if we get any complaints in various communities um, that they have issues with rodents and so forth. So we'd do that. Um, we would also attend to issues with uh, fly infestation, um, roaches. We would give the, the homeowner or community members advice on in terms of what should be done. And if it's something where we do not have the chemicals for the treatment, then we would um, indicate to them that they may need to use a, a private pest control company or something. Mm. So, in, so in, in other words, you is more educational to the, yeah. to the people in the community? Educational, yes, but we do do treatment. Mm -hmm. We do treatment as well. So we would go in, like I said, we do the assessments, look at uh, where we see in the higher populations, we look at the signs of an infestation. Um, we look for the rub marks, the the tracks. We look for um, evidence of gnawing in a particular area and so forth. Um, we look at the other factors which would contribute to the proliferation of rats and mice. So take, for instance, rats, mice, they need three things to survive, food, water, and shelter. Mm -hmm. And in many instances in our communities, in our cities and towns, we provide all of those things for the rats, right? So we'd go out and um, we would give the, do the education, but we also cannot run away from the level of treatment and beating that we'd have to do in these communities and the cities. As you mentioned rat, um, Chris, I don't remember at one time uh, there was this uh, chemical uh, beat, the only building for that called BioRat. <laughs> That never I heard was it was coming from Cuba. Yeah. What was it? What does the teacher do that? It was not allowed in because it was said that one of the active ingredients was salmonella. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, based on that, the board took a decision not to bring it in. Yeah. Um, as to where it is right now, I don't know. So just where it is right now. That will be your last. <laughs> as he said, one of the active ingredients. Yes, it was a. Uh, Bio pesticide, mm -hmm. but one of the active ingredients mm -hmm. in this particular pesticide was salmonella. Mm -hmm. And when we researched sal the salmonella that was in this particular product, there was a great possibility that it mutated. Mm -hmm. So um, the board had no, no choice but to um, refuse registration of that particular product. Mm -hmm. A number of the Caribbean countries as well did not register the bio right. Okay. Because of that particular reason. Yeah. Ah, alright. So what so what bit do you all use? Okay. So what we would use, um, we tend to rotate our bits. So we look at the previous uh, active ingredients in the beat because you have fast killing beat, you have slow killing beat. Fast killing beat is not something that you can use for a very long period of time mm. because of course when the rodents are very smart, right? When they see that they're dying because they're eating that particular um, rodent inside, they will develop beat shyness. Mm. So you have to have a rotation. So we may be using contract, we may use clear, right? We will look at other beats. So we may use a fast for, if we see a very high infestation, we would use a, a brand of bait where you have um, a quicker kill, so it's fast killing, and then phase it out into a more slow, slow um, kill bait. Okay. So we'd have to, we, we would have that rotation happening at our department. Maybe there's some devil advocate here. I remember when I was a little rat, when you were the rat. Done in um. just to <laughs> run in the thing. <laughs> But I noticed right. you, 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 the, the applicators are well armed, um, they're well covered. They're well clad, okay. right. And what happened to the public? Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> the reason the applicators are well clad is because they're um, exposed to the chemical at a higher concentration and for a longer period of time. Mm. So they're more at risk because 
when we fog, uh, people tend to say, oh, the smell, the smell, the smell. What we, we, we smell more of is the the solvent that we use is the diesel that we smell in more uh, versus the, 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 the malafion, okay. right? So in that solution, you have a much higher um, volume of diesel in it versus the malafion. Okay. The other thing is that uh, the fog dissipates very, very quickly. And again, in our our geography, there's always the wind always carries us around mm -hmm. and so forth. So it never it never stays within that area, a, 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 a confined area, for a very mm -hmm. long period of time. Mm -hmm. Very quickly it dissipates and it, it goes off. And again, the concentration that the public is um, exposed to, it is so low and it breaks down so quickly mm -hmm. that it doesn't pose a risk. But of course, because of just the nature of malafiana, we are trying our best to avoid any issues, to mitigate any um, potential risk. So this is one of the reasons that we do look for alternatives. Although we know that we're using it the right way and we're not causing too much harm to our people, but of course, malafiana does affect other insects, which are very important. I remember as a child, we used to run chase butterflies in the savanna. True. If you keep on spraying malafion, you're not going to have butterflies to chase. So it's going to kill the butterflies, it's going to kill your mm -hmm. dragonflies, it's killing your bees. And pretty soon, if we keep on just spraying and spraying and spraying, we're not going to be able to eat because the bees, the dragonflies, the butterflies, they carry the pollen and they... They, 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 they essentially they responsible for that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So because of that, we're trying our best to only spray for mosquitoes um, in response to dengue outbreaks on island. Okay. okay so what have you currently and um, what are your issues? Any problems you face? You seem to be involved in this pest management business. The biggest problem to me is people come to you most times when the problem is out of out of or maybe they have tried certain options and it hasn't worked and they want you to solve it one time mm -hmm. and based on my background i stick to i need to understand the problem mm -hmm. because if i just apply a pesticide charlotte made the point about the rodenticides you mm -hmm. have what's called acute poisons which is a poison that the rat must eat a certain amount to die mm -hmm. if it doesn't eat it can get sick, but it will remember what it ate, and it will not eat that for up to three months, which is much smart smart one. Yeah. prevent other rodents from eating it. You have the anticoagulants and the colocasiferols, which will, they would know it's a poison. Mm -hmm. So they, these can vary based on the generation of pesticide, and they can kill as early as 24 hours or more. Okay. So you need to know that. So if somebody says, I have a rodent problem, it's not just coming to put bait to get rid of it, because if you put the bait in the current situation, the rat has a menu. It doesn't mean it's going to take mm -hmm. your part of the mm -hmm. menu. So sanitation becomes very important. Yes, Exclusion yeah. becomes very important. And educating people that, one, we have three rodents in Saint Lucia. There's the roof rat. What you see on trees is different from what you see on the ground. Mm -hmm. Now we're at, and you have the house mouse. So you need to know which one you're dealing with and how to bait for them and what you need to do to prevent them from getting into your space. So the control is different? The control yes. can vary, yeah, yes, yeah, because yeah. the rodents are neophobic and also neophilic. Mm -hmm. Neophobic means they don't trust anything new. Neophilic means the, the alpha rats will force the other rats to do stuff for them or they will be aggressively going after, the, after okay. things. Okay. So you need to understand that behavior and know how to, how to deal with it. Um, so people need to understand that it's not just about applying a pesticide, mm -hmm. it's understanding the environment that the pest is in and reacting accordingly by removing food, shelter and water or one of these, then applying pesticides. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the program. I, I was about to ask for a final point from each of you, but I was even going to that this, we just have one minute, less than one minute left. So I really want to thank you all for being here. Um, Mr. Registra, I hope all the chemicals will be out of Sinusha very soon, but we'll do my best for to that. <laughs> and um, Ms. Leo, thank you for being here. Um, of course, Chris, thanks again, and I wish you all success in whatever endeavors you are in. Thank you again. You've been watching Agriculture in the Move. Thank you for viewing the program. Remember, agriculture is our business. Eat fresh. So much is the best. The money stays here. Thank you again. I'm Philip Sidney saying goodbye. Thank you. Mm.